Welcome back. This is video number two, how to punch your punch needle stocking. So today we're gonna go over everything that you need to know to punch and finish the front part of your punch needle stocking. I could not be more excited to start punching my very last stocking. This has been a long journey and I am ready for it to come to an end. So needles ready, let's start punching. Let's start by learning how to thread our punch needle. All right, you are going to put your yarn through this open hole here and pull it through. Then you're going to pull it back through this little channel and make sure that it's all the way in there. So if at any time you're ever having punching problems, just make sure that your channel is open and clear and you've got enough yarn. And uh, then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna cut this crazy end off here. And then we're gonna pull that down to that tiny little bit and we are ready to punch. So you wanna make sure to always have plenty of yarn uh, out that your needle can pull through. So we are going to start with outlining this blue foot. And what you wanna keep in mind is that whatever direction you're punching, the hole and that open part of the needle needs to face that direction. So I am going to outline this whole foot and then I'm gonna come back and fill it in. So we're gonna start here, right on the line. I'm gonna push down and then pull up and then count about two little squares and push down again. Then I'm gonna count two more squares and push down again, count about two more squares and push down again. Now after a while, this gets super, super easy. You don't even count, you just push it down. So you can see that there's a little tail sticking out here. And what we're gonna do is we are going to push that through to the other side. So typically in punch needle, now I'm gonna pull this out. Um, Typically in punch needle, you would you, we're punching on what's considered the wrong side or the back side of the project, and the right side is the opposite side that I'll show you in a little bit. However, I loved the look, the tight look of this side, so we're gonna use this side because that's what we want to do. Now, if you don't like a strand or you punched it too tight or whatever, all you have to do is pull it out and uh, push the monk's cloth back into place. It's fantastic, this is so easy, it's just wonderful. All right, I'm gonna pull my yarn down and we're gonna punch again. I'm just, now I'm just skimming the surface here um, and I'm barely picking up the punch needle. I'm not pulling it up like this or doing anything like that, right? Cause that will ruin your stitch. So I'm keeping it super, super close and just going about every two stitches. So what you wanna keep in mind is you want to do about six stitches per inch and you can do a little bit more, a little bit less. Uh, if you are making a rug or something, you know, that might be really important, but as long as you're happy with the way that the stitches look on this side, you're good. Sometimes you don't even need the scissors to do that. You can just kind of fix it just like that. When you're beginning to punch, sometimes you might put your hand down on the yarn and then your needle can't thread that yarn through and then your stitches will get be getting pulled out or something. So always just make sure that your yarn is free and we're gonna keep working around this little foot here. And again, I am turning, sorry, I gotta move my chair. I am turning my punch needle as I go. You might also notice that I am switching back and forth between hands and that is because Amy Oxford told me that uh, if you're learning a new craft you might as well be a little bit uncomfortable and try to use your opposite hand because there are plenty of times where it's easier to punch with your opposite hand. Now we're going to come to this little spot. This little spot here I'm going to make sure that there's two punches and I'm going to get as close as I can to that um, beginning punch and then I'm just going to turn it. Now we always turn the needle when it's inside the monk's cloth and I'm going to just 
go again and do a row right next to the first row. And we're gonna sit here and we're gonna fill this little foot in. I'm done, I stopped. I held my yarn and I pulled my needle up. Now I'm going to clip that off real close and I'm gonna take my little scissors and push this in. Now this foot looks super crazy. Some of these stitches are a little bit high so I'm gonna just push them into the monk's cloth. This foot looks kind of crazy, right? And you're like, whoa, that doesn't even look like a foot. But when all the other colors are added, you'll see that it totally does. And you're gonna start to just see it come to life. So I'm gonna show you how to start and stop again. It's recommended that you always do at least three stitches, one, two, three, before starting and stopping. So if you wanna stop, pull your needle out like you would normally. Then I hold that yarn, pinch it there, cut it off. There's our little uh, line. And then push the yarn back through to the other side. So now we've done all the blue and I have to do these little tiny eyes. So I'm only gonna punch three times. That's the, the, the smallest amount that you can punch. And I left a little bit of space to do the eyes. So here we go. I'm just gonna try to kind of do it on top of itself a little bit. Um, and then it might look kind of crazy, but you can fluff it with your scissors and they'll look great. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so that kind of looks buried and that's all right. So here we go, I'm gonna do it again. Eye number two, I am taking the tiniest stitches for this. And then pulling that up, clipping it off stuff in it back in. Okay, now we're gonna get close here with my stool. And I'm gonna just kind of pull that up, pull that thread up just a little bit so that we can see it. And push this other blue thread down around the eyes. And just like that, our Mama Yeti has a cute little face. Just like that, our Mama Yeti is coming to life. So she's got her scarf and her hands and everything, and now I'm gonna go in and start outlining her body. So there's something about doing the little creature first that is so fun to me. Um, I get to see them, basically this little drawing that I did, come to life, and you really, I mean, it looks, cute and all like this, but once you really get the overall stocking color in there, man, you can really see it then and it's so fun. Um, so I wanted to talk about some of these little lines, right? So this from here to, and to here is gonna be the same color, but I'm gonna try to punch it in a, in a direction that tries to give more movement to the body. I'm gonna make myself like a little section and I'm just gonna punch in this direction and then make a small section of the white to punch and fill in. And I'm gonna go around these hands and everything. And you really wanna try to not over overlap a stitch. You don't want to like stitch over a stitch if you don't have to. And another thing that I try to do is I try to brick lay my steps. So just like in Legos, uh, instead of doing the same stitch right at the same point, I try to, I'm gonna see how I pulled that up on accident. I'm just gonna pull that back down and get it reset. 
and I'm going to try now to punch right in the middle of the previous of the previous stitch so that you get a bricklay effect instead of um, just this kind of same stitch over and over. Like, uh, you should do this part first, you got to do this first or second or whatever. You can punch any part of your stocking first that you want to. So, if you want to outline it first, do that. If you want to start with the creature first, like I did, do that. That always was my favorite, starting with the creature first. And then I would kind of play this little game with myself like, what color yarn do I have the, the least amount of on this stocking? I'm going to punch that first and then get rid of that yarn and move on to the next color. And then I would kind of be left with the overall color of the stocking or the white parts. And it was always just really fun to see the creature come to life. And so that is usually what I would start with. And just like that, Mama Yeti is done. Now, yes, she looks cute and everything, but she's really gonna look cute when I go and outline this. So I wanted to give you a look at the back side. So, here is our backside. Now, if we were actually making a rug, this would be the right side of our fabric. So all of these little pieces right here are all those ends that I have pushed down. So I'm gonna go through and uh, trim these off just for fun right now so that they're gone. Uh, so that you can kind of see a little bit more of the Yeti itself. Now we'll do all, we'll finish all this trimming down later, but now I'm going to show you what it looks like uh, from the back side while I'm punching. When I begin a punch line, I really look at the pattern and try to figure out where the best place to start would be. Maybe a place that I can't go back into, which right now would be right about here. And there's only gonna be one line punched in here. This is like to separate the arm from the leg of the Yeti. punching you want to start and stop as few times as possible um, and with these stars you kind of don't have a choice so um, while I do like this little extra touch that they add this was one of my least favorite items to punch um, so again thinking of starting and stopping the least amount of times I tried to make one line out of this one little side of the star. And then here I'm just clipping and putting those ends back to the other side. But then you have to do right here, this has to be a small one. One, two, three. Remember we try to do at least three stitches for every uh, start and stop. Here again, I'm just following my line to get started, uh, trying to go just about every two stitches. And then whenever I need to turn my needle, I make sure to turn it while it's in the monk's cloth. So now 
now that my letter outline is complete, I'm gonna start filling the space in. I'm gonna keep trying to bricklay my stitches, and at the same time, when it, things get tight, I'm gonna try not to punch over any stitches. So our letter is done, and while it doesn't look super crisp, it will after I outline it just like uh, Mama Yeti did. I am going to start um, doing the green uh, edging of the stocking because after these two pieces, the green will be done, and then the only thing left is the dark blue of the stocking and the white of the snow. Since we are actually punching and using the wrong side, which is the side that we're currently see seeing, it, it can be helpful to know that you need to do the stitches pretty tight together. So sometimes it, it might look like you don't have any room, but you really have plenty of room. So what I, what I do sometimes when I'm bricklaying my stitches is when I'm pulling my needle up, I push that stitch over and make enough room for my stitch, my next stitch to go in because I want to make sure that they're as tight as possible. I don't want to see any monk's cloth through the yarn pattern at all. been working on these stockings I've always felt like it was a really good feeling to put colors away that you have used and that you're done with so now I only have two colors left to go we're in the home stretch the details are done and now it's just kind of doing all the basic fill-in of the two colors okay let's take a quick punching break so if you're watching this and thinking, holy cow, this is a lot of work, you are absolutely right. I would not deem this project easy or quick or anything like that. This is, but it is, it's heirloom quality. That's what I would call it. This is an heirloom quality project and it's so worth it. Um, and to give you uh, an example, the stockings that I made, it took me roughly six to eight weeks for each of them. I made them in my spare time here and there uh, with, you know, while hanging out with my four kids. So, um, but the one that I'm punching right now, because I actually did it during my work time, uh, it took me only five days and I don't work like all day. So it took me five days working a couple hours a day. So if you, um, don't have four children that interrupt you constantly, uh, maybe you could get one done in a weekend or maybe two weekends. Um, and, and you know, maybe you're not making seven stockings also. So I definitely just want to say that if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, it can be overwhelming, but the final result is so worth it. Something that I often do is make a smaller section out of a large section to make the amount of room that I have to punch feel less daunting. So as you can see, I've got, I've got to punch all of these in all of these little parts of the star, but I also have to punch this whole section too. So I'm gonna essentially rope this off with my yarn and then fill that in. And for some reason that makes me feel like overall doing this star is just less daunting. And then once that space is done, then once I start filling all this in, it just feels easier to punch for some reason. So I finished punching around my little snowflake 
and you might be thinking like, oh my God, Jen, you, you lost it. Like we can't even see it. So I'm gonna show you the best way to, um, to bring the stitches back. You just use your tiny little pair of scissors and you're gonna go in here and basically pull them back up. Pull each one, just real gentle, back to the surface so that you can see those stitches again. Now, um, if you really can't, you can always like pull the orange out and then stitch again. But usually I have pretty good luck with being able to just kind of dig in here a little bit with my scissors and pull those stitches right back out. It's really important to be comfortable while you're punching and to have good posture so that your body isn't straining or getting tired. So normally I would sit with my punch board resting against the table like this, or if I was on the couch, I would have pillows propped up so that my needle wouldn't be hitting anything from the underneath. Here we are at the home stretch of punching. I've only got my stocking color left to do, but sometimes punching such a large space can feel a little bit overwhelming. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna outline the whole stocking, and then I'm gonna break the stocking up into sections so that I can punch that small stocking and feel like I accomplished it and keep moving on. And then before you know it, it'll all be finished. I'm gonna do this in time-lapse so that you can see me do the whole thing and we're gonna get this done and on to the next step, which is constructing our stocking. Okay, story time. If you wanna skip, you totally can. Um, you might be noticing that there is like a lighter area of my blue yarn. So, I mean, no joke, 48 hours before my filming deadline, I ran out of about two square inches of my blue yarn. My husband called 48 yarn stores. He found some six hours away and he was almost gonna drive to get it for me. But even if he drove the six hours to get it and then six hours home, he would have missed the time that I needed the yarn to finish filming. We already had a trip planned up to my father-in-law's cabin to shoot all the stockings together. And so I had already dyed all these um, bottle brush trees to match the stockings. I had the dye. So I figured I would take a crack at dyeing the yarn and I had to do it multiple times and I even had to like hand paint a little bit extra on after it was punched. 
So 10 out of 10 don't recommend. Buy more yarn than you need or don't buy such specialty yarn. I didn't know what I was doing when I picked out my yarn in the beginning. Um, so I will forever remember <laughs> that when I look at my stocking with those couple little lines of lighter blue yarn. And I guess that is just my story and here it is. And it will serve as a warning to you when you are buying your yarn. Our punching is complete and the very last step is just clipping all of those little ends that we pushed from the front side to the back side so I went through here and fluffed up all the yarn trimming off all those ends making them match the thickness of the rest of the punched yarn so that everything looks clean and proper and ready for sewing Oh my gosh, I'm done. Seven stockings punched. I am I am so excited. I cried a little bit. Um, I cannot wait to see them all together. And I will see you in the next video for the construction.